Hey everybody, Grant Gavin here and welcome to week two of my video contents. You may be asking yourself, you know, who's this crazy guy? What's he doing putting all this content and educational material out there into the public space? Well, as most of you know, I'm the owner of Remax Panache. I'm a property entrepreneur, but I'm also a public speaker. And uh, one of the things I've learned about speaking and if you follow speakers around the world is that they give of their content and they give of their knowledge so freely. It's part of their marketing strategy. And I think it's such a great message for real estate agents as well. Is sometimes we try, and, we try and keep everything to ourselves and we try and hold it back. But in actual fact, if you start giving more and you start giving out your content, you start to show something very important and that's the value that you can offer to the marketplace. So here's week number two and I had another meeting with my guys this morning. We always have a Tuesday morning meeting. And the message this morning was, wow, did you watch that rugby game on the weekend? Um, I think the Springboks did a fantastic job coming back from about 19-3 down. But what really, really caught my attention was when they focused onto the coach's box, there was Alistair Kutsia, really, really emotional. I don't know if you noticed in his eyes, he had tears welling up in his eyes, and it really, really got me thinking. Uh, and it took me back to so many experiences in my life where I've been coaching people, and they've, they've performed, they've produced, they've found the fire within themselves, they've found the inspiration, and they've done something remarkable. And uh, when that happens as a coach, wow, uh, the feeling that you get inside is, is quite incredible. Uh, because... Think about it, if you're sitting in that coach's box, you could have done all the, the necessary planning, all the necessary strategizing, you could have picked the best team that you thought could go out and take on Ireland that day, but if your players run out in the field and they don't have that fire in their belly, well, there's nothing much you can do as a coach. It must be one of the most disappointing feelings for a Springbok coach. Anyway, so I went to my guys this morning and I said, well, if you'd watched that game, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a nutter at the moment. I'll watch a rugby game and I'll come up with a business sort of flow and you can see it on the board there. Um, let's just talk about a rugby coach for a minute. Um, and it's not to get too technical in rugby, but I want to tie it back to business so that you can see how it impacts on you as well. So take a rugby coach. What will they do at the beginning of the season? They'll set a goal. So that's the very first thing they'll do is they'll set a goal. It's got to be reasonable. It's got to be achievable. It's got to be something that inspires you. And it's got to be something that everybody buys into. And there's a brilliant story about Jake White when he took over the Springbok team. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, the Springboks had lost in France. And he gathered all his players around in the change rooms. And he said to them, guys, we will be back here in this exact same change room in four years' time. But there'll be one major difference. We'll have the William Webb F Ellis World Cup trophy in the middle of our little circle of players. Um, and they there and then set that goal uh, to win the World Cup back in 2004. And as you all know, it came... It came true. So, but if you look at if you look at rugby teams, I mean, just to use sport as an analogy, um, like in real estate, we can't teach you how to make a sale, but we can teach you all the activities that you need to do and all the disciplines that you need to do. And if you put it all together in this big magic pot, you'll make sales if you're doing the right activities. And likewise for a rugby team, can you teach a rugby player how to score a try? I mean, apart from diving over a white line. No, you can teach them all the activities. You can teach them the skills and the strategies. So, for example, a team like the EP Kings, they've got to set a goal for the Super 15. Do you think their goal is to win the Super 15? I would, I would highly doubt that. I don't think that's an achievable or realistic goal. But they might have a look at their fixture list and say, well, I think we've got to give all our home games a good crack. So let's have a goal at, at winning all our home games. Um, but maybe there's one or two, three or four teams that we really feel we can have a good crack at. And let's set a goal that if we win all those games and maybe one or two away, then we've had a successful season. So the coach will go to the goal and then he'll reverse engineer it. So he'll say, right, so if we wanted to take on the Sunwolves, the new Japanese team when they come into Port Elizabeth, let's have a look at their strengths. Let's have a look at their weaknesses. Let's look at our strengths and weaknesses. And let's plan a strategy for that game. I know the Sharks do this a lot when they play uh, Super 15 games um, in sort of February, March, early year when it's very hot in Durban, their strategy in those games is not to pass the ball a lot because they don't want the ball to slip out of their hands. So what the coach will do is he'll have a more kicking or defensive minded strategy. So what he'll do then to win that game is he'll practice during the week and in the weeks building up to that game, they'll practice their kicking skills. They'll practice running up, chasing the ball, putting pressure on the, uh, the opposition, um, making sure they get territory gains. So there's going to be a specific game plan and specific skills to match that game plan and then what the coach will do during the week is he will plan for every single practice in that week as to what skills they need to be implementing and practicing on the field because you do your best work and your hardest work on the practice field so that you don't make mistakes on the big day but after all this planning and after all this reverse engineering and strategizing if on game day the players that's why i've got the word you there right at the bottom 
if the players don't run out with that fire in their belly um, and the will to win, there's not a hell of a lot more that the coach can do. So why don't you relate this now to your business? So as a real estate agent, you stand at the beginning of the year, imagine you're sitting in January and you want to set a goal. You're not going to set a goal to say, I want to make a sale. Um, you set a goal probably based on income. Now, what if your income goal for the year was a million rand? Now, a million rand might sound quite crazy, but it's entirely achievable. So how would we reverse engineer the million rand? We'd say, well, at 5% commission, we've pretty much got to sell 20 million rand worth of property. Now, in our area, 20, uh, the average property sells um, for about 2.3 to 2.5 million rand. So when you break down 20 million, that's a property sale of 1.7 million rand a month. So we've already taken this big 1 million rand commission goal, and we've now brought it back down to what does it actually mean? Well, I've got to sell a home of 1.75 million rand per month. Now that's my plan. That's my goal. So how am I going to strategize to make a sale of 1.75 million rand per month? Um, that could even be a half a sale when you're selling a 3.4 million rand property. So how am I going to sell? Well, am I going to go list? Am I going to have a listing strategy? Or am I going to work buyers entirely? And you take it and you break it down based on what works for you. And say, for example, uh, you wanted to do it all from listing. So I want to list um, a home of 3.4 million every single month of the year. That's my goal. And if somebody else sells it, their half portion, um, take it away. I'll be left with my 1.7 million rand per month and I'll achieve my goal of a million rand. So how am I going to go and now go and list properties? So what are my prospecting strategies? What are the skills I need to learn? We're now here now. What are the skills that you need to go and practice to make sure that you're going to go and list enough properties to hit your goal? Uh, you might have a challenge with making calls. Uh, then you've got to go and learn some scripts. You've got to go and learn some strategies of how to speak to people on the phone. Um, you know, maybe you have a, a strategy of marketing drops or email flyers. And if you don't know quite how to do that, well, you've got to go and hone your skills. And the best place to learn your skills is in the office. So attend training sessions. Make sure your principals are providing you with these sessions so that you can learn these skills. And then once you've learned the skills, then you've got to plan, you've got to, you've got to plan for how you're going to implement them into your day. Uh, there's no rugby coach in the world that will rock up onto the training field and go, guys, off you go. Go and, go and do whatever you feel like it today. Um, they're going to have a specific plan, and so must you have a specific plan on what you're going to do when you get to the office each and every day. If your goal is to make a million rand per annum in income, um, and you've got to list 40 mandates so that you can sell 20 and hit your goal, then you've got to have a plan of what you're going to do each and every single day to make sure that you're implementing your strategy to achieve it. But again, even in real estate, what's the most important thing? The most important thing is you. Uh, at the end of the day, your principal can provide you with so much. Your brand can provide you with the strongest brand in real estate. Uh, you can have training sessions. You can have conferences. You can attend whatever you want. You can read books. But if you do not have that internal drive and you don't have that passion or that will to get out there and make the best of yourself in your real estate career, then there's not a hell of a lot more that your principal or your coach can do. And take it from me, when you see that happening, when you see somebody not fulfilling their potential, um, it's, it's not good to watch. Uh, and you kind of, as a coach, sometimes you feel a little helpless, but you've also got to realize that at the end of the day, any bit of success that anybody achieves in life is going to come from you. Uh, so if you don't have that fire burning in your belly, you've got to go find a, a way to make it happen. And that's why I always say, I'd rather inspire than motivate. Because if I motivate you, it could last 30 minutes. If I motivate you, it could last three days. But motivation needs to be topped up all the time. But when you find that inspiration that comes from within, that reason, that why, that gets you to get up every single morning, come into the office, make your calls consistently, uh, keep in touch with your database, doesn't matter what type of day you're having. Even if you're having a bad day, you still get into the office and your why and your reason, your purpose and your drive is strong enough. Only you can find that. Um, and maybe what we'll do in one of the upcoming sessions is we'll work on, we'll work on finding that why. But for now, I hope this makes sense. Um, it's, it's not new information, just hopefully presented in a different way with the rugby analogy. So if you've got any questions, if, you, if you're enjoying these videos, please just check down below in the email. Uh, give me a shout. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.